us begin the public worship of God by singing to his praise in hymn number 27 in the songs of God's people. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you, and adore you, and we sing these verses to God's praise. service will be conducted by Angus MacDonald, our elder, and also the English service by Duncan Mitchell, elder and session clerk. On Sunday, the 7th of February, God willing, I hope to be back to conduct the services here. Anyone who wishes to profess their faith, they may speak to me or one of the elders of the church. And if anybody requests baptism, they can speak to me on one of the elders of the church. The flower calendar for 2016 is placed in the corridor. If there is an event that you want to mark, or an occasion, or something that's important to you, then it's a good idea to really mark that date. Even if there's two lots um, of flowers for one day, then there's a lot of people who are really housebound and you would appreciate um, uh, some nice gift from the congregation. So the, the, the calendar date is there and if you could speak um, to Mrs. Mary Fraser then that would be much appreciated um, to put a date down for the flowers of the church. Payment for the life and work for 2016 is now due and should be given to Isabel uh, Fletcher um, or put into the offering bag. The payment for this year is £24 and the cheque should be made out to St. Columba Gaelic Church. Um, we notice that um, if anybody is ill, if they could let us know, um, it would be much appreciated. 
appreciate it. The food bank is at the back of the church and if anybody wishes to donate to that, it's provided 250 meals for the last month. And also the church is open on Thursdays between 12 noon and 2 p.m. The new interim moderator, Reverend Melvin Wood, is available to support our locum office parish and congregation whenever possible. The stated annual general meeting will be held on the 17th of March at 7.30 and all reports will be given to the clerk, to the congregational broad, George McKechnie, no later than the 18th of February. Retiring collections, the Kirk session would appreciate help uh, from the congregation in identifying suitable charities for retiring collection at communions and other events. Um, this is really very, very important because we can't be seen to be supporting just one charity, but different charities who may need our support and help. So if you've got suggestions, please pass them on to Mrs. Anne McKeegan, the Elder, if that's uh, possible for you, so that we can have a list that's brought before the Kirk session of the church. Thank you. The we don't have a Scots night this year, but there's an alternative. The Intermoderators Church in Blotill Parish Church are having a Burns Supper on Friday the 29th, starting at 7.30. And we welcome anyone from St Columbia who wishes to attend. Tickets are £10 and £5 for children, including haggis, neebs and tatties. Um, bring your own bottle, music and the usual toasts and further details are available from our session clerk. The moderator of the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland, the Right Reverend Dr Angus Morrison, will preach during the joint Gaelic and English service at 11.30. Dr Morrison is the first Gaelic speaking moderator for 40 years and it is very appropriate that he should come to St Columba Gaelic Church during his year as moderator, and I think we should be praying that God would provide some Gaelic ministers for the church, which is really um, at a very low end. We have to be joined, uh, we hope to be joined by the Gaelic choirs and the pupils from Glasgow Gaelic School. So we trust that the whole Highland population of Glasgow and beyond, whether Gaelic speakers or not, will join us with this memorable occasion and of course we'll be happy to welcome non-Highlanders um, as we always do. Highland hospitality is for all. These are the intimations that I have to hand and uh, I don't think there's anything else that I need to bring before you. We now have a message for our young people and thanks very much to Agnes McKechnie, your elder, for helping us out. Well, the first question today is, what was created for the day? And then, you know, maybe you've got a big little voice in it. What did God make in the third day? He made birds and he made... Oh, sorry, not just fish, copper fish, yes. And the reason we're talking about was the first
Well, thanks very much for your address today. Let us pray. Eternal God, bless the children that come here from week to week. We pray that they may grow up to prosper in their lives and that you would reward them in their lives, educate them and teach them and make them great. And we thank you for the dedication of their parents bringing them here and for the dedication of our Sunday school and for all who teach them there and for all the gifts that you give them to do that. Bless them, we pray, in more than we can say. And we ask these things for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us sing in hymn number 17. Hymn number 17 by Cole. Shalom's Shady Room.
2 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 1 to 16. And it's page 304 in the Pew Bible. After the death of Saul, David returned from defeating the Amalekites and stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day, a man arrived from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and with dust on his head. When he came to David, he fell to the ground to pay him honour. Where have you come from? David asked him. He answered, I have escaped from the Israelite camp. What's happened? David asked. Tell me. He said, the men fled from the battle. Many of them fell and died, and Saul and his son Jonathan are dead. Then David said to the young man who brought him the report, how do you know that Saul and his son Jonathan are dead? I happened to be on Mount Gilboa, the young man said, and there was Saul leaning on his spear with the chariots and riders almost upon him. When he turned round and saw me, he called out to me, and I said, what can I do? He asked me, who are you? An Amalekite, I answered. Then he said to me, stand over me and kill me. I am in the throes of death, but I'm still alive. So I stood over him and killed him because I knew that after he had fallen, he could not survive. And I took the crown that was on his head and the band on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Then David and all the men with him took hold of their clothes and tore them. They mourned and wept and fasted till evening for Saul and his son Jonathan and for the army of the Lord and the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. David said to the young man who brought him the report, Where are you from? I am the son of an alien, an Amalekite, Amalekite, he answered. David asked him, Why were you not afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of his men and said, Go strike him down. So he struck him down and he died. For David had said to him, Your blood be on your own head. Your own mouth testified against you when you said, I killed the Lord's anointed. Let us draw near to God in prayer. Eternal and ever merciful God, we find ourselves in the presence of a holy God who knows all about us better than we know ourselves. Every thought, every deed, every thing that we do and say. And we come before you today as needy sinners as we ever came to a wonderful saviour and provider who can do great and wonderful things for us whence joy to us is brought. So we pray today that we would have an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that the power of heaven would come down to visit us, to touch us, that it would leave an impression upon our lives, that would have great and eternal benefits for each one of us. Gracious God, there is none like unto thee in heaven above or on the earth below. Besides thee there is none. You are the fairest among ten thousand. You are the bright and the morning star. You are the lily of the valley. You are our everything, our all in all and above all. So help us through life. Along with all the uncertainties that we face, the challenges that come our way each day. We give you thanks that you are faithful to each one of us. And gracious God, we pray that you would bless our young people, that they may grow up to be great witnesses for you in the world, 
and shining lights. Bless, uh, O Lord, those who need you today in any special way. Be near to them, we pray, to bless them and keep them. Bless, uh, we pray, those who are ill and in hospital, be near to them. Those who are confined to their homes, bless them too. Bless all who care for them, nurses, doctors, our ambulance service, our fire service, our police, and all the gifts that you've given to many to help others and who utilize their skills to their highest potential. We give you thanks for each gift that you give each one. So grant, O oh Lord, today that you would bless to us the reading of your word, the singing of your praises, here together. Help us through the service. And we pray now that you would bless us as we pray together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us sing now to God's praise in the songs of God's people, number 48. I need thee every hour.
The second reading continues from the first, uh, page 304 in the Pew Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 1 and reading at verse 17. David took up this lament concerning Saul and his son Jonathan, and ordered that the men of Judah be taught this lament of the bow. It is written in the book of Jashan. Your glory, O Israel, lies slain on your heights, how the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines be glad, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised rejoice. O mountains of Gilboa, may you have neither dew nor rain, nor fields that yield offerings of grain. For there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, no longer rubbed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the flesh of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, the sword of Saul did not return unsatisfied. Saul and Jonathan, in life they were loved and gracious, and in death they were not parted. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, who clothed you in scarlet and finery, who adorned your garments with ornaments of gold. How the mighty have fallen in battle. Jonathan lies slain on your heights. I grieve for you, Jonathan, my brother. You were very dear to me. Your love for me was wonderful more wonderful than that of women. How the mighty have fallen, the weapons of war have perished. Amen, and may God bless his own holy word. Well, thanks very much to Ellie McLeod, to Colin McLeod for his reading today much appreciated, um, both very talented in Gaelic and English, so we thank you for utilising your gift in God's house too. Let us now lift the offering. providing for us in our times of need. So we give you thanks for all that you give us, but we can never repay the greatest gift of all, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way we can do it is by believing in him, trusting in him and following him. 
all the days of our life, so that we may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So forgive us our sins that we do daily in thought, word and deed, and wash us in the blood of the Lamb, and we shall be made whole. So accept these gifts in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing now in our next hymn in the Songs of God's People, number 86. O Lord, my God.
Let's turn now to Second Samuel chapter 1, page 305 in your pure Bible, or 304. Let us look at verse 14. Verse 14. David asked him, Why are you not afraid to lift your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? It's a very dangerous thing to interfere with the Lord's anointed in a way that would destroy them. Constructive criticism can be good, but destructive criticism can ruin a person in more ways than one. And it is not healthy, and it doesn't come from God, it comes from the devil. And this is certainly what this man who destroyed the Lord's anointed was all about. He wanted power. Power is a strange thing. It can make people do strange things. This man destroyed Saul, who was the king. He took the crown and the bracelets of gold back to show him that he had won this great battle. So that he could win favour and get a place in the royal household because he knew that David would now be the king. It was deceitful and it was wrong and if you live by the sword you will die by the sword and that's what the teaching tells us in the Bible. Samuel, it means that godly name. He was inspired as a writer. He was inspired as a prophet. He was indeed diligent as a judge and he was faithful to God. He was industrious in his service and indeed devout in his life. He was powerful in prayer. He was also remembered in his death. What a testimony to a good man. Here we find David when he hears of the death of Saul and of Jonathan. Jonathan was his soulmate. They were both married. They both had children. But he had a soulmate. We all have friends people we can confide in, share things with, and we know it's not going to go any further. Soulmates are important, very valuable, and very worthwhile. We know that Jonathan had Mephibosheth, who was in Lodibar, and who had been crippled, of course, because his nursemaid fell with him when they were running away uh, seeking refuge but that's another uh, sermon David and his men had not taken part in the battle between Saul and the Philistines though they had marched with the Philistines to the field of conflict now it's very strange he was marching with the Philistines because you think that he was jumping from camp to camp because he was fighting Goliath, if you remember, and he won that battle. He was a young man and he wasn't afraid. His father Jesse didn't think very much of him either, because his father Jesse had chosen him uh, in many ways to uh, indeed be uh, not the one to be chosen as the king. But strangely enough, what happened here was that Samuel, who was doing the anointing with the oil, had met with all the sons of the tribe of Judah. And none of them seemed to speak to him from God that he was to be king until they asked him, do you have any other sons? And Jesse said, yes, I do. I have one more. He's out looking after the sheep. And his name was David. Beloved. 
and then he was brought. And the word of God spoke immediately from heaven to Samuel and said, Arise, anoint him, this is he. It's not the one people think or choose. People can be wrong in judgment and they should pay for it. We have to be very careful what we say and how we say it and use the people who judge. We have to have the gift of discernment. David certainly did. We know this from this chapter, how gifted he was in discernment. As the two armies prepared to join battle, David could not fight the Israelites because he could be seen as a traitor to his country. Plus, it would bar him from getting the throne. Now, we know by this time David, this well-beloved son of Jesse, was born in Bethlehem. He was of the tribe of Judah and the youngest, indeed, of this family. He was a shepherd. He was strong, chosen of God. We know that he met with a lion by the way. Do you remember that great logo on the syrup tin? Out of the strong came forth sweetness, Abraham lion. Out of the strong came forth sweetness. Out of many dangerous situations there can come great blessing into your life. Out of the great trial in your life there can come great blessings and openings from God to help you through your life. God can work in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. He was indeed, unlike Saul, who was chosen by the people. David was chosen by God. This is what we must remember. He was chosen by the people. David was chosen by God. He was the royal harpist and he was the armor bearer who killed Goliath. A prophet and a talented musician who was very inspired in his writings and in his music. And he utilized these gifts that he had for the glory of God and the edification of the church in the world. Far better, although David felt he missed the path. And he finds refuge in God and in his people. David, fearing to betray his real feelings, answered, But what have I done? What have I done? We always ask, What have I done? We can come up with all sorts of answers and all sorts of ideas of what we have done at times when we ask the question. David asked it as well. Or what hast thou found in thy servant? He that has provoked vengeance of the Amalekites. His own soldiers threatened to stone him. Things couldn't even get worse. His own army till he proved them wrong. Till he proved them wrong. You know, it's amazing how his own soldiers even judged him. We should be very careful. Judge not lest ye be judged. If you live by the sword, you die by the sword. Three days after the battle, this event waiting, anxious word for the messenger to come to town. And he bowed before him, he was then the prince, he bowed before him 
and uh, they gave him a report of Saul and Jonathan's death. But he went beyond the statement and beyond the facts. Went beyond that. And his words, his words proved him guilty of the charge of killing Saul and Jonathan. It was too descriptive, too detailed, too detailed, and David was so gifted that he read into it. That's a talent, isn't it? It's called being spiritual. Being spiritual. And people mock people who might be spiritual. Do you know what? It's a gift from God. And very often, it the right. And when you see this happening here, you see David would be pleased, he thought, that Saul was dead and Jonathan was dead because Saul was his enemy. But what I find strange here is, there's no, nothing strange about the fact he was distressed about Jonathan dying because he was really his soulmate and he was his protector and he helped him in many ways along the way and protected him from it. But he was distressed for Saul's death too. And he said, were you not afraid to destroy the Lord's anointed? Because David had an opportunity. Don't judge, don't judge too quickly because David was wanting to kill him too. And the Lord stopped him twice not to touch the Lord's anointed when he lifted the sword. But how many lift that sword and take the destruction of others in their hands? The ruination of others? But don't touch the Lord's anointed. Well, David rent his clothes and moaned and fasted and wept for Saul and Jonathan his son, for the people of God and for the house of Israel. That's what he did. And David asked him, Were you not afraid to lay thy hand against the Lord's anointed? Were you not afraid? There's no fear today from God. We should fear God in the sense that God is the judge of all. And we should be very afraid because God is not mocked in any way, in any way. By his own words, he was condemned. And David's grief was very sincere. He did not rejoice at the fall of his enemy, that the obstacle had been removed and the throne was at last his. And we find that later on, how that friend of his, Jonathan, who had been loyal, faithful friend to him, that he was not going to lose him, his memory in time to come, because he wanted to show if there was anyone left of the household of Saul, that he could show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. Well, if you have the opportunity to show a little kindness by the road of life, do it. It doesn't cost much to do it. A little kindness can go a long way to help others. And the opportunities are there. We just need to look for them and find them and do a little kindness that can help someone else who needs us. May God bless these thoughts to us today. Amen. Let us sing in songs of God's people 107. Through the love of God our Saviour, all will be well. And we can sing the three verses.
of God, the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and the precious love of our Saviour abide with each and every one of us, now and forevermore.